Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live, and we do have Larry Pratt, head of Gun Owners of America, gunowners.org, on the ISDN line with us to talk about the law that no one seems to know about, saying the feds or local police cannot confiscate your guns without a warrant or without you know, specifics. But all over the country, they're taking legal, lawful guns. We see the articles every two days or so. Or somebody puts a gun in their car to go to the shooting range, a neighbor sees it, cops come, the gun's legal, they still take it. I had two people walking to me this week on the street who have property outside Austin. In one case, it's 100 acres. They're shooting, totally legal. The cops came and said, it's still an a, a, a aggressive display, still frighten people, terroristic, hearing the gunshots. We're taking your guns, you're going to jail. That's in Texas, folks. You can't shoot on a 100-acre farm, okay? I mean, in the middle of nowhere, windmills, the police are coming. So it's all part of this intimidation under federal grants of gun owners. And I want people to know about the legal teeth that Larry Pratt and Gunners of America helped get in place. What was it, five years ago? How long ago did that law get passed, sir? It was following Hurricane Katrina, and Louisiana was ground zero for gun confiscation. And precisely the time when people needed their guns the most, uh, the cops were coming around to take them. And the problem is they knew where the guns were. They knew who had the guns because they'd gone to the gun stores, compiled the list uh, from the purchase records that are required to be kept by the federal government unconstitutionally. And they knew exactly where to go to make their surgical strikes. Now, the, as a result of that, David Vitter, senator from Louisiana, got enacted a law that keeps the federales from doing that. And a couple of states also did the same. After a disaster, you cannot uh, go and grab people's guns. But let's look at a couple of things. It means that w whether they have a centralized registry or not, and I would argue they do, but whether they do or not, effectively, there is a gun registry. All it takes is a little extra uh, shoe leather and they can go to the various gun stores of an area, and they'll have a list of almost everybody that has a gun, unless somebody bought a gun or got a gun as a gift from dad or uh, a neighbor or something like that. It's going to be a matter of record, and that's why we fought so hard against the Toomey bill, because it was going to expand to private transactions the requirement that a background check be done and after the NSA scandal has broken, I don't think too many people are going to doubt. Uh, they're not going to suspect that I'm paranoid by uh, maintaining that, of course, the federal government has illegally kept a record of gun owners. Alex, if they want to know what you're saying to Aunt Susie on the telephone, don't you think they might want a list of the guns even more? Well, it's gun owners of America, of course, uh, that's helped push the NRA as even... Um you know, folks on our show have talked about who are NRA board members. It, it, it has been gun owners of America, as Ted Nugent has said, that has helped push the NRA to be more hardcore. What do you make of the Hill article today? NRA joins ACL lawsuit, claims NSA starting gun registry. Well, it came out that the DEA has access to it, along with 2,000 corporations. They're all spying on us. They're all spying on us, and it is just so absolutely out of control that uh, we've got to get the house to act the house can do something that would be effective the house was given by the founders this body that's elected every two years and uh, therefore hopefully is the closest to the people they can simply say none of these funds may be used for and then fill in the blank now what we're most concerned about at the very moment is that by the end of the month there will have to be a continuing resolution passed by the Congress. This will continue the funding of the Congress pretty much at the level of the previous fiscal year, but the fight has to be made over defunding Obamacare. The Republicans in the House have to originate a continuing resolution that specifically defunds the implementation and operation of Obamacare. If they do that, the Senate may or may not concur, and the president might veto the bill if the Senate did concur. But here's the deal. That would mean that the government would no longer be able to operate by borrowing. They could only operate on 
what tax revenues are coming in. Well, that's 57% of what they are spending. In other words, they borrow 43% every day, every month, uh, throughout the year. Uh, the government would certainly not stop operating the Social Security checks, which are mechanized, uh, digitized anyway, could uh, continue going out without probably the presence of a human being because it's all programmed in computers. So some of those so-called essential functions of federal government uh, would not be affected. Uh, only if somebody as diabolical as our president were to issue an order saying, uh, we don't have the money to run the electricity for the computers that are generating the Social Security checks, so therefore they're not going to be able to go out. Uh, does that sound preposterous? Well, think of some of the other things the president has done. When given a choice, he'll kick you right where it hurts the worst. Uh, so uh, we think that the fight has to be made. The Republicans have to realize that they uh, some of their leaders have been peddling a lie, uh, starting with John Boehner. Um, they say, well, listen, to remember what happened in 1995 when we shut the government down under Clinton? Well, once again, the government didn't shut down. It slowed down. Uh, and yes, I do remember what happened. I was here and. I remember that the polls were in favor of the Republicans until Gingrich went wobbly and started to cave in. And, of course, he's an establishment CFR guy. He played that perfectly and then betrayed the contract. Absolutely. But the climate today is even more hardcore. Yes. I want to shift gears yes. now with you, Larry Pratt, head of Gunners of America, if you just joined us, to the geopolitical. I know you've traveled the world and have been involved in advising Congress on events for decades and now the world is waking up to what you and I have been talking about for two and a half years. Our government under Obama at Benghazi a year ago, September 11th, but, but before that, funding al-Qaeda to overthrow Libya, trying to overthrow Syria, trying to overthrow our ally, Mubarak in Egypt. Now the military speaking out. Now you've got Ted Cruz saying our military is not the Air Force for al-Qaeda. That's a quote. That's you've a got very good phrase, by the way. That is really spot on what's happening. Absolutely. So we're, we're, now that you've got uh, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, now that you've got uh, Pat Buchanan, now that you've got uh, Matt Drudge coming out, I've never seen real conservatives, libertarian types, really shine like this. I'm very proud. The warmongering left, of course, loves it. But now you've even got Pelosi saying the left's turning against him. Obama admits... Uh, uh, Slimeball, uh, Matthews, admits that this is to haul his butt out of the fire. So they're not even denying it. And, and the flip-flopping of it's a red line. We never said red line. Or we don't need boots on the ground. Yes, we do. And I if believe the Republicans cave on this, this is something where the polls I've seen, 80% of our fellow Americans think it's nuts to go into Syria. We have no discernible national interest in that country whatsoever. Yeah, it's horrible what's happening, but just as bad as the government is behaving to its enemies, so the al-Qaeda opposition is behaving to the government. Oh, they're I mean, clearly worse. I mean, it's, it's all terrible. And, uh, but, but you're right. It, the the al-Qaeda guys are worse. They're more aggressive. Uh, uh, Assad is happy to just butcher his own people. He's not looking for foreign conquest. He's not a threat to the United States. Why in the world are we bothering him? Why... Well, I, I know the answer to my question. It's because the president has uniformly supported the worst of the worst every chance he got. Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood over Mubarak. Same thing in Tunisia. Uh, and now we're seeing it played out again in Syria. The guy is not naive. The guy is not incompetent. He's doing exactly what he intends to do, which is to diminish the, the ability of the United States to operate in the world scene and to pull us down many pegs. I really know that what you're saying is true now, and I was even in doubt of this a few years ago, because why would the establishment allow America to be so damaged? They're globalists. They want to move everything to China. They want to move it more towards the EU. Uh, they, they're, they're shutting down our power plants, our gold mines. Everything they do is to wreck America. They really do hate America, and even if they run it, they'll run it in the ground to get at middle America yes. and the and the, and, yes. and the bitter clingers. But let me bring this up to yes. you, Larry Pratt. Let me ask you this question. I see this as a collapse, though, that you have the left and right coming together against this war. Some polls, like Reuters, 9% support the war. Congress is saying they're getting 500 to 2, 500 to 1 uh, calls 
against the war versus pro and nobody's believing Obama and now his support's draining in Congress. I see this as almost a Ceausescu moment. Well, we haven't gotten there yet because we've got Democrats saying, well, yes, I know my folks are against it, but uh, I've got to go with my president on this one. In other words, his reputation, bailing him out of his own muck, is more important to them uh, so far than what the people are saying back home. Now, I've never seen numbers like the ones you just pointed to. Uh, 500 to 2 is stunning. Uh, that means there's hardly anybody in the country with a brain that thinks we ought to be in Syria. And if they go in anyway, and if the Republicans like Boehner, who I think is compromised, and that's why he folds like a suit, I could go into that too if we have time. Uh, I think he's going to fold on this, and the question will be how many in the caucus that almost revolted against him when he was reelected, how many of them are going to say, that's it, John, we're not going with you? Well, they're already admitting they don't have the votes. Let me give you the headlines. It's uh, Weekly Standard first broke it yesterday. Now more numbers are out WorldNet Daily. We have the latest in about 30 minutes going up on Infowars.com. There's more info out. Congress uh, calls to Congress 499 to 1 against Syrian wars, the WorldNet Daily headline. Then they have the press releases by 20 members of Congress about the calls they're getting. 100 to 1, uh, 99 to 1, 523 to 4. Uh, you know, because they keep a tally, uh, 1,000 calls to my office, five are for the war. Uh, that's Republican out of West Virginia. Shelby, uh, th this, is, this is what they're saying. Uh, Republican and Democrats, they're getting 100 to 1, 125 to 1. It's, it's, it's 99 plus percent against it, Larry. So if the Congress supports the president on this, I think that gives us a wonderful opportunity to see people like uh, Bevan, who's running against McConnell, uh, really pick up. He's got money. He's a wealthy businessman, and he's got the Tea Party endorsement. They all coalesced behind him, which is uncommonly smart for people on our side. Kudos to the people in Kentucky. Uh, you've got three uh, substantial conservatives running against Lindsey Gramnesty. Uh, there might be other conservative challengers now come out against these pathetic Republicans and take them on in the primaries. Well, that was my next question. You've got a really, I'm not kissing your hand in, it's just true for folks that are just now tuning in. Larry Pratt's got his ear really to the ground there in D.C. The word I get and what I see happening is actually a libertarian revolution taking over the Republican Party. All the stars are real libertarians. All the stars are, are anti-fraudulent war. All the stars are pro-constitution, pro-gun. The old Republicans are running. The others are, you know, are compromised, as you said, clearly with, with blackmail and NSA garbage. Uh, the NRA is growing backbone. I mean, I see a American revolution happening yep. that'll make what Barry Goldwater tried to do look tame. And also, there's a lot of uh, conservative people of faith, uh, primarily evangelicals, but also Catholics and Jews, who are really, I think, more stirred up than they were in 2010. Uh, hey, we sent you guys there to fix the problem, and it sure kind of looks like you're part of the problem now yourself. <laughs> well said. In closing, Larry Pratt, uh, what do you expect to happen in 20? 14 currently, unless Obama gets a big war, which will up the Democratic Party's ratings, they believe. I don't think that's going to no, work I, this time. No. But, uh, I mean, I, I think we're going to see a Tea Party uh, surge in the House. What do you see? I think so. And if the Republicans support the president, there's going to be primary action galore, I think. If they vote for a continuing resolution that refunds Obamacare, uh, I think that would stoke the fires even more. Because this is a real absolutely valid opportunity to kill Obamacare by the end of the month to to put in that continuing resolution no funds to be used for Obamacare in any way period paragraph and if they don't do those two things which are absolutely red hot button issues then I th I think some of these incumbents are in for some rude surprises well said, Larry Pratt. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Last 60 second comment. Uh, the examiner out of Washington is carrying the story. 
D.C. cops under orders to arrest tourists with empty bullet casings. You can buy in 7-Eleven, you know, the necklace that's an empty right. bullet casing. And, and they've been given the order to harass and grab as many visitors as they can. D.C. won't let little kids videotape the Capitol. I've been to there. What's wrong with the D.C. police? They're like something out of North Korea. Well, they have a, a woman, I'm pretty sure, liberal police chief. And, uh, you know, it starts from the top. Uh, the council hires uh, the kind of chief they want, and she's very politically correct. And uh, I don't know that, that this really reflects the way many of the officers feel, but they will be told to follow orders if they want to continue working there. So if you're wearing a bullet casing around your neck or it's on your key ring, the cop's going to follow orders and take you to jail for something that's been thrown out of the Supreme Court, even if it was a real bullet. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Well, let me invite folks to go to gunowners.org. We'll keep them posted from there with our alerts. They're free, uh, come about once a week, so it's not going to clutter up the inbox at gunowners.org. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon, Larry Thanks Pratt. so much, Alex. Pro Pure is introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filters today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139.